Today, I'm gonna to tell you what it's really like to live in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. I've compiled some of the best questions from past clients, conversations, and comments, and I'm going to address all of them today. My name is Michael Carraway. I'm a realtor here in the DFW Metro, but before that, I was in your position that you're in right now. I was doing research on Dallas, Texas. You know, back then, my family and I were living in Denver, Colorado, and we were researching a possible move to Dallas, Texas. Well, we made that move. I became a real estate agent, and now I help people just like you make the move here to Dallas all the time. So I know that you're gonna get a ton of value out of this video today. So we have to get to that first question right now. Now people ask me all the time, what are the best master plan communities to build new construction in in the DFW Metro? And I'm in one of those right now. Welcome to Winsong Ranch in Prosper, Texas. Winsong Ranch is a 2,000 acre master plan community that has become the gold standard for what you can expect in a neighborhood in Dallas, Texas. Known for its five acre crystal lagoon, residents love how many amenities are packed into this community to promote a more social, active lifestyle. The neighborhood will ultimately include 3,300 single-family homes, four unique amenity centers, four schools, two fire stations, and over 600 acres of green space, parks, creeks, trails, and amenities. Many people looking to buy a home in Dallas, Texas are looking to buy in a community like Winsong Ranch, but Winsong is far from the only master plan community, and there are hundreds of new construction neighborhoods around the DFW Metro available for home buyers to fall in love with. Now the best master plan communities for new construction homes like this beautiful house right here is gonna completely depend on what your personal preferences are, what your budget is and all that kind of stuff. I can give you suggestions for days, but here are some of the most popular new construction master plan communities in the DFW Metro. So there are a ton of options, but ultimately some of the most popular communities are Winsong Ranch, Light Farms, Mustang Lakes, Trinity Falls, Harvest, Pecan Square, Eleven, Wild Ridge, Union Park, Sandbrock Ranch, Inspiration, and many, many more. So I can't tell you how many questions I get about the weather here in Dallas, Texas. It's probably one of the most common questions I get. One of the first questions that people that are considering a move here actually ask. And guys, I'm here in February wearing a t-shirt outside, enjoying this beautiful day. So the weather is amazing, but it does have its downfalls. We're gonna talk about all of the things that you need to know about the weather here in Dallas right now. So yes, it's amazing that I'm wearing a t-shirt in February, but the real question on your mind right now is, is the heat tolerable in the summer? So the hottest months in Dallas are gonna be July, August, and September. Those are the three months that you have to expect a little bit hotter weather in Dallas compared to the other months. The average high in July is about 95 degrees, the average in August is 95 degrees, and the average in September is about 88 degrees. That being said, we get plenty of days that get up above 100 degrees, especially over the last few years. In 2023, we had 55 days above 100 degrees. In 2022, we had 47. In 2021, we had eight. And in 2020, we had nine. So what about the temperatures in the rest of the year? That's actually the great thing about it is if you can get through that two to three month window of hot weather in Dallas, you're gonna enjoy the rest of the year. In January, you have an average high of about 57 degrees. February is 62 degrees. March is 69. April is 77. May is 84. June is 91. As we mentioned, July is 95, August is 95, and September is 88. October is 78, November is 67, and December is 58 degrees. So you can see that we have pretty mild climates outside of those two to three months in the summer that gets really hot. Now the winters can get cold, like that is just the average temperature. You know, we see 30 degree weather every once in a while, we have little stretches of it. We do get snow every once in a while. We do get some ice storms every once in a while. But overall, really mild weather and you're able to enjoy the weather outside year round. Outside of those times when it gets above 100 degrees, I think for the most part, people are pretty active outside and willing to go outside and enjoy the weather here in Dallas, Texas. One of the questions I get all the time is, Michael, how is the real estate market in the DFW Metro? And to be honest, it changes all the time. And by the time you're watching this video right now, it may be completely different. But here in February of 2024, the real estate market is definitely heating up and it's getting more and more competitive, especially in the pre-existing home market. Right now, things are moving really fast. You know, for example, we just listed a property in a popular master plan community and within the first day, we had about 10 showings and we had four offers that first day. So it is moving very quickly right now if you're looking for a pre-existing home. That being said, 
what the opportunity right now is for new construction homes like this home behind me right now. A lot of these builders have a lot of inventory. They want to move the homes quickly and so they're pricing it really well and offering a lot of incentives like being able to buy down your rate or offering a certain amount of credit at closing. So right now, new construction is the best opportunity out there as far as getting a home here in the DFW Metro. Another really common question I get is, what do you not like about Dallas? Like just being completely honest, is there anything that you wish was different about living in Dallas, Texas? And the honest truth is yes, there are a few downfalls to living in Dallas. That first thing that comes to mind is that Dallas is just really flat. Like you do not get a lot of topography and elevation here in the DFW Metro. There are little spots and I try to get to those spots as much as I can because it reminds me a little bit of Colorado, but Generally speaking, you're gonna have to be okay with living in a very flat place. The other is just the general lack of natural beauty. Like, obviously I'm in a new construction zone right now. We got dirt everywhere. Uh, so this is not like, you know, really manicured yet. Uh, but, you know, you can see you have like some green belts, some mature trees down here. Uh, but, you know, in the rest of this neighborhood, this we're in Winsong Ranch right now, you know, you're not gonna have a ton of mature trees. There's little pockets of them. They're not gonna be all across the neighborhood yet because it's just a new area. Now you do have like nature preserves and stuff, which we talk about in this video, but you know, generally speaking, you just don't have a lot of natural beauty like you would in a place like Colorado where you have mountains or, you know, if you lived on the coast, you have the ocean. You just don't get that in Texas unless you live down south, kind of near Houston. The other thing I could do without is the heat. Like, I think it's manageable, especially because it's just short window here in the DFW Metro. From my perspective, you know, you have a few months of really hot weather, the rest of the, the year is pretty dang comfortable. So I think it's manageable, but if I had to choose, I'd choose to not have a 55 days above 100 degrees. Now, if you went to my comment sections in a lot of different videos, or if you went to Reddit, you could see people complain about the DFW Metro all day, every day. Like, if you wanna see different perspectives, head over to Reddit or head into some of my comments and check out what people say about Dallas because man, there are a lot of people that absolutely hate Dallas. And just being honest, it's not for everybody. But I think a lot of people exaggerate some of the things that they say. You know, one thing I see all the time is that people say there's nothing to do in Dallas, but that is definitely not true. There's a lot to do. People just don't take advantage of it. You know, another thing that people complain about is how expensive it's gotten here, you know, as far as housing and taxes go. But for a lot of us that have moved here, it's actually a lot cheaper. And you'll hear things like, you know, crime rate's too high or traffic's too bad or it's just too crowded. All of those are just opinions. And from my perspective, they're not accurate opinions. But again, everybody has the right to their own opinions. So do your research, experience Dallas for yourself and make your own opinion. Hey sir, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Good. There's that. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Have a good so people always ask, you know, what are the people like here in Dallas? And obviously, I can't tell you a huge summary that describes every single person that lives here in Dallas because honestly, there's so many different kinds of people who live here, uh, especially with how many people that have relocated into Dallas over the last few years, you get all sorts of kinds of people. So no matter what kind of person you are, no matter what kind of person you're looking to be around, you're gonna be able to find that in Dallas. That's what's kind of cool about the area is that it's kind of a mixing pot you now definitely more than it was in the past. And uh, that's definitely a benefit from my perspective. Now, if you talk to some of the locals around here, you know, there's a group of them that get pretty angry when you start talking about all the people that have relocated to Dallas. They definitely are not very open-minded. Uh, they don't like the idea of so many people moving into their state and, uh, and from their perspective, ruining it. Um, a lot of them think that, you know, because you have different political views, uh, you have different, you know, social views, uh, different, you know, upbringings, uh, different demographics, you know, they think that that obviously is, that automatically is going to make you bad for their state. Uh, but that's not the case. And I would say that there are far fewer people like that compared to people that are very accepting. You know, in my experience personally, when we moved from Colorado to Dallas, it was pretty easy to meet people fairly quickly. You know, like I said, people are pretty social in Dallas for the most part. Um, and a lot of people are also not from the area, so they're also looking to meet people. So whether you just go out for a walk in your neighborhood or you go to the community pool, uh, maybe you go join a group around an activity that you're interested in. Um, there's tons of ways, even going to a coffee shop. We've met some great friends just by going to a coffee shop and talking to them uh, randomly in the line. You know, there's a ton of different ways to meet people. I think that if you're moving from out of state, you can intentionally 
make a good group of friends pretty quickly here. So right now I'm in the PGA district in Frisco, Texas, and this is kind of the start of everything that is going up in the north side of Frisco. This was the first thing here, and there's so much more coming here, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. But right now, PGA District has two professional golf courses. They've got a par three course as well. They've got a 72 hole uh, mini putt course called the dance floor. Well, there's a ton of other activities in here, like a top golf lounge. You got dining and bars and all that kind of stuff, plus the Omni Resort tons of stuff just right here uh, that was all spurred by the PGA of America moving their headquarters to Frisco, Texas. Now around here, you're gonna look right now and it's gonna be a lot of open land, but you're gonna see a lot of the dirt is being ripped up right now. And that is because there are a ton of things that are planned for this area. You know, one of those things being Fields West, which is gonna be a massive uh, retail and dining de district uh, here in Frisco. It's gonna be uh, second to none here in the DFW Metro. And you also have Universal Studios building a theme park here just down the road, as well as a lot of other things that are gonna be flocking to this area very soon. You know, that's what's kind of cool about the suburbs in Dallas. You know, they're not sleepy at all. You have a lot to do in the suburbs of Dallas, uh, but you also have a ton of great things in Dallas as well. You know, in the suburbs, you know, you have the opportunity to go to live sports here in Frisco. Uh, you have the ability to go do family activities, tons of great restaurants and dining options and town centers to experience here in the suburbs. But if you're looking for something, you know, maybe you want to go to a Cowboys game or a Mavericks game, you know, you can go downtown Dallas for that. Or if you want a little bit more higher end dining experience, there's a lot of options downtown Dallas. Or maybe you want to go to some of their museums, uh, like the Perot Museum or the Art Museum. You know, you have a lot, uh, no matter where you live in the DFW Metro, within a 45 minute to an hour drive, you're gonna be able to get to downtown Dallas, experience all that has to offer, but you're not also gonna have to be forced to do that. You know, you have plenty in the suburbs to be able to experience as well. So what does a typical weekend look like for me and my family? Well, we've got young kids, so we usually are waking up around 6 a.m. or so on the weekends, and first thing we do, we get out and we go to a coffee shop. You know, there's so many great local coffee shops around here that are um, just awesome environments, great coffee, great food. So we'll, get, we'll go somewhere where we can get some good breakfast, get some good coffee, um, and usually a space where the kids can, you know, roam around freely. There's like a dedicated outdoor space or something uh, where kids can run around. The other thing we'll do is we'll typically go to a park um, or maybe even uh, hit up like a, a kid's play center. You know, there's a lot of cool areas, uh, cool businesses around here that you know, they have a bunch of toys um, and like play sets within uh, a building that people can just let their kids run around and play with other kids and meet other people that way. So that's something else we'll do on the weekend. You know, then we'll go out and do kind of our thing for the day. You know, a lot of times I have showings, got to meet with clients, things like that. Uh, then, you know, about mid afternoon or so after the kids are done napping, we'll go out, we'll explore the town a little bit. You know, maybe we go to a place like Legacy West that has a bunch of shops, uh, some good patios, uh, some good restaurants might do that uh, or maybe we'd go to a, a place like the pga district which we we're just at um, and you saw the open land there i mean it's a great spot to go hang out with the family they do movie nights uh, on the green there uh, so there's just you know we might find an event like that um, you know if it's october we'll try to hit up an october fest or some sort of festival um, depending on what month it is just a ton of things like that we can do to get out in the town and enjoy all that texas has to offer so one of the things I get asked all the time is, are schools actually good in Dallas, Texas and the surrounding suburbs? And the quick answer is yes, schools are really good here in the entire DFW Metro. Dallas has some good areas for schools. The suburbs have a lot of great areas with schools. Um, and that's kind of, it's gained a good reputation around the US as having great schools here in Texas and specifically here in the DFW Metro. But the reality is there are a lot of great schools and a lot of bad schools, you know, depending on what your criteria is and how you're judging each school. So what I always recommend is go to either greatschools.org if you're looking for a quick uh, way to research different districts and different schools, or if you're really looking to dive deep into each school district or each specific school, you can go to the Texas Education Authority and they have all sorts of reports that you can dig into and really see the data around each school and each school district. But in working with a lot of young families with kids that go to school, I can say that a lot of them are very happy with their experience in each school district so far here in the north suburbs of DFW. So another question that I get asked about all the time is, what is the outdoor recreation like in Dallas, Texas? And to be honest, this is my biggest complaint about Dallas. So the bad news about living in Dallas, Texas is that the natural environment is just not super inspiring. Like there's not a lot of heavily wooded areas. Uh, you're not having a lot of topography, not these beautiful, beautiful lakes that you see in pictures all the time. 
I guess it's not super inspiring. There are plenty of parks, nature preserves, mountain bike trails, hiking trails, things like that, that you're able to get out and enjoy nature a little bit. Some are absolutely beautiful. Some are not very beautiful at all. You know, one of my favorite places to go is Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. It's really beautiful there. There's a really good sized woods there that you can go through, uh, some good hills uh, that you can actually get some elevation in and get some good hiking in. Uh, and great place to go ride a bike as well. Really solid place to go where you get to feel like you're actually in nature a little bit. You know, if you're into mountain biking, there's plenty of mountain bike courses all around Dallas actually. Some are pretty flat, others do have some hills built into the course. If you're into golf, obviously this is one of the best places in the entire world to golf. Tons of amazing golf courses and you can use them year round. Obviously we have a lot of great lakes here in Dallas as well. So if you're into kayaking, paddle boarding, boating, you know, maybe you're into water skiing, you have tons of options within the DFW Metro as well as about an hour's drive of the DFW Metro as well. So really good options if you're into lake life. The other thing is if you have an outdoor activity that you really like, you know, for example, maybe you're a runner or maybe you're a cyclist, you know, there's always groups that are meeting up and doing those activities together. Like there's running clubs I've seen, cycling clubs, uh, just workout clubs that meet up in different places, uh, maybe have a beer afterwards. Like it's really, there's a lot of meetups that happen around these outdoor activities in the DFW Metro. So even though you don't have necessarily the best environment to do those, you still have a good community around it. But having lived in Colorado and experienced one of the best places in the entire US to experience the outdoors, you know, moving to Texas, that was the biggest thing that we had to overcome was that lack of outdoor recreation and natural beauty. But let me tell you, we have found a solution to that problem and I am so excited about it. You know, we lived in Dallas for years before understanding this secret. And I'm gonna fill you in on it right now. So about three hours north of the DFW Metro is a place called Broken Bow, Oklahoma. And it's actually home to Broken Bow Lake, as well as Beaver's Bend State Park. And this area is absolutely gorgeous. You actually have a mountain range that runs through this area. It's not gonna be these huge peaks like what you see in Colorado, but you have really, really good, it kind of reminds me of like foothills, if you're familiar with uh, mountain ranges, where you get uh, some good elevation, but you're not seeing the rocky peaks. The lake is one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen. There's tons of great hiking trails, mountain biking, fly fishing. Now the main town in Broken Bow is actually gonna be Hocha Town, just north of Broken Bow. That's where a lot of people end up staying, as well as going for uh, places to eat and things to do. Tons of great things to do if you were visiting. I uh, have tons of recommendations. Definitely reach out if you want some of those. But the really cool thing about this area is that there are a ton of luxury cabins in this area that you can book on Airbnb and stay for the night that are relatively affordable. We stayed in some beautiful cabins up that way and I definitely highly recommend if you are into the outdoors and you live in the DFW Metro that you take the three hour trip up there a few times a year because you get that sense of nature that you desperately want when you live in the DFW Metro. The other question I get all the time is, what is the cost of living like in Dallas, Texas? And to be honest, it's pretty spot on with what you'd find in any other typical city in the US. But there are specifically four different expenses that may be way more or way less than what you find in other cities. Now, the first thing that's different than other cities is that there's actually no state income tax in the state of Texas. So uh, compared to a place like Colorado, New York City, anywhere in California, all these other states that do have income tax, you're actually gonna save some money by moving to Texas because you're not gonna have that income tax expense. The other thing that varies is housing costs. Now, so many of the people that are actually making the move to Texas are gonna see these home figures as dirt cheap. Whereas if you grew up in Dallas, you're gonna think this is way too expensive. And that's because we've seen home costs in the Dallas area really rise over the last few years. So people that have lived here a long time have seen home prices really increase. But compared to some of these areas that a lot of people are moving from, housing is still very affordable in the Dallas, Texas area compared to other places in the US. The median home value in the DFW Metro at the time of this recording is about $382,000. Now, one of the more popular areas to move in the DFW Metro right now is gonna be in Collin County and Denton County. It's where you're gonna find places like McKinney, Texas, Frisco, Texas, Plano, Texas, Prosper, Salina, all of these very popular suburbs that people are moving to. In Collin County, the median home value is about $480,000, and in Denton County, that median value is about $440,000. So obviously, price points vary drastically, and that's why I always recommend you reaching out to me and my team so we can help you identify what those things are that you're looking for in a home, what your price point is, 
and really just be able to guide you towards the right place to call home here in the DFW Metro. But the other area that is definitely a little bit more expensive in the DFW Metro is property taxes. A good rule of thumb is that you're gonna spend about 2% of the appraised value of your home on property taxes every year. So for example, if your home appraised at $400,000, then you could expect to spend about $8,000 in property taxes. Now the amount actually might be less than that because you have things like homestead exemptions and other exemptions that are available that reduce the amount of the appraised value and ultimately lowers your property taxes. And the other area that's gonna be different as far as cost of living in the Dallas, Texas area is gonna be insurance costs. Now insurance costs in Texas are gonna be a little bit higher than other states because we've had a lot of events recently that have led to a lot of claims being filed by homeowners. You know, we've had a lot of hailstorms, we've had colder winters, and just ultimately a lot of things that have happened recently that have caused a lot of claims to go up and ultimately the cost of insurance has risen with it. So the question is, is it worth it? Should you actually make the move to the DFW Metro or should you just stay where you're at? And to be honest, you know, if you want an affordable place to live that has a lot of things to do, is close to a really big city, you want a really nice, big, modern house, then Dallas could be a great fit for you. But hey, if you are looking for the most naturally beautiful place in the world, you want access to the ocean, you want access to the mountains, you want a lot of outdoor activities, well, then maybe it's not for you. The thing is, is that the DFW Metro can work great for some people and not so great for other people. And ultimately it comes down to your personal preference and you need a guide to be able to help you through that decision. So reach out to me and my team anytime we can help you navigate that decision of if Dallas, Texas, and the surrounding DFW Metro makes sense for a move for you or not. And make sure to watch this video right here if you wanna see a real life look at what a master plan new construction community looks like here in the DFW Metro.